Arizona. Hey, hey, we're riding the red wave here. And you know what? One thing we know is that this is the happy party tonight right here across town. Across town, there's some folks, and they're feeling a little blue. Hey, this, when I think, when I think, I was, please excuse how I'm dressed. I was working at polls today. How many of you were working at polls today? God bless you. Thank you. We can't wait to get back to Washington, D.C. with some new Arizona congressmen. And we're going to show Nancy Pelosi the door very shortly. Don't let it hit you on the backside, Nancy. Hey, that, yeah, yeah, she's she's losing the gavel but finding the hammer. Too soon? Is that too soon? I didn't know. I just didn't know. How about the guys that cleared out Columbia? I'd like to add them too. Whatever you, I mean, but it, yeah, it's probably call. more likely to go to Paul Pelosi, Susan Rice, and Gavin Newsom. So I think your list is, is, yeah. is correct, <laughs> but a little off brand for Big Joe. Uh, Rachel? Yeah. Well, maybe Paul Pelosi needs the, the hammer instead of the metal. <laughs> well, it's metal. All right. Rachel? Good it's to see metal. You. We wish him well. We wish him well, as yeah. we wish you all. See you in Breaking news right now, body cam video of the attack on Nancy Pelosi's husband in their California home has just been released. It shows Paul Pelosi opening the door and police telling that suspect, David DePape, to drop the hammer. This part may be disturbing. DePape is saying swinging the hammer off camera. Officers rush into the house, jumping on DePape and taking him into custody. A judge ruled yesterday to release the video. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi, who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. So what exactly happened in the Pelosi house that night? Well, there have been a lot of conspiracy theories about it, and people who've put those forward have been attacked for it. You're crazy. So there's one way to end this debate immediately, and it would be a constitutional way to end it. In fact, we should be demanding it, and that's to see the body cam footage from that night. Because these police are public servants. They work for the rest of us. They have no right to hide that. But the police, for some reason, have refused to release that body cam footage. We get body cam footage every day in the news business, but they won't release this. And not only will they not release it, they are intent on not releasing it. In DePape's federal court case, a judge has just issued a protective order banning the release of sensitive information in this case, and that would include the body cam footage. What is going on here? Why are they hiding this? Is there a good reason? <laughs> we don't know. Trump and his MAGA supporters not only embrace political violence, but they laugh about it. At his rally, he jokes about an intruder whipped up by the big Trump lie, taking a hammer to Paul Pelosi's skull and echoing the very same words used on January 6th. Where's Nancy? And he thinks that's funny. He laughed about it. What a sick... <laughs> My God. I, I think it's despicable, seriously. Not just for a president, for any person to say that. But to say it to the whole world listening, when I was overseas, anyway. Oh, my God. Trump's assault on democracy isn't just part of his past. It's what he's promising for the future. He's being straightforward. He's not hiding the ball. His first rally for the 2024 campaign opened with a choir of January 6th insurrectionists singing from prison on a cell phone, while images of the January 6th riot played on a big screen behind him at his rally. Can you believe that? This is like something out of a fairy tale, a bad fairy tale. Trump began his 2024 campaign by glorifying the failed violent insurrectionists insurrection at our, on our Capitol. 
The guy who claims law and order sows lawlessness and disorder. Trump's not concerned about your future, I promise you. Trump is now promising a full-scale campaign of revenge and retribution, his words, for some years to come. They were his words, not mine. He went on to say he'd be a dictator on day one. I mean, if I were writing a book of fiction, and I said an American president said that, and not in jest, he'd call in, I quote, the termination, quote, this is a quote, the termination of all the rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the U.S. Constitution, should be terminated if fits his will. It's really kind of hard to believe. Even found in the Constitution, he could terminate? He threatened the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff with the death penalty. Says he should be put to death because the chairman put his oath to the Constitution ahead of his personal loyalty to Trump. This is coming from a president who called, when he visited his cemeteries, called dead soldiers suckers and losers. Remember that? Sometimes I'm really happy the Irish of me can't be seen. <laughs> it was right around the time I was at Bo's grave, Tommy. How dare he? Who in God's name does he think he is? With former aides, Trump plans to invoke the Ins Insurrections Act, the Insurrection Act which will allow him to deploy, which is not allowed to do in ordinary circumstances, allow him to deploy U.S. military forces on the streets of America. He said it. He calls those who oppose him vermin. He talks about the blood of America as being poisoned, echoing the same exact language used in Nazi Germany. He proudly posts on social media the words that best describe his 2024 campaign, quote, revenge, quote, power, and quote, dictatorship. There's no confusion about who Trump is, what he intends to do. I placed my hand on our family Bible, and I swore an oath on the very same steps of the Capitol just 14 days after the attack on January the 6th. As I looked out over the capital city, whose streets were lined with National Guard to prevent another attack, I saw an American that had been pushed to the brink, America that had been pushed to the brink. But I felt enormous pride, not in winning, I felt enormous pride in America, because American democracy had been tested American democracy had held together. And when Trump had seen weakness in our democracy and continued to talk about it, I saw strength, your strength. It's not hyperbole, your strength, your integrity, American strength and integrity. Ordinary citizens, state election officials, the American judicial system had put the Constitution first and sometimes at their peril at their peril. Because of them, because of you, the will of the people prevailed. Not the anger of the mob or the appetites of one man.